let's go to the commissioner's office. And um, whoever would like to start, please come up to the podium.
And the real problem isn't giving them a few thousand dollars more each year. The real problem is the Commonwealth of Massachusetts taking 90%, 89% of the Registry of Deeds money. And what do they do with it? Can you tell me that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is using every single dollar to the best of its advantage? I think not. Anybody who's driven a road in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts knows that. Anybody who sat on the team knows that. These people have gone out and they've got the Commonwealth to start paying the bills for the courthouses in time. And at one point we were saying, hey, we'll just close the courthouses. That's, that kind of got people's attention. But these people have been out there working every year to get more back to the, to the, to the county. They could do so much more if the state wasn't taking a lot of the money from the Registry of Deeds. <clears throat> we have an increase in budget. They're going to present. All, all of the years have been audited now. We're up to date. This is a phenomenal achievement, and I applaud all of them, and especially the Treasurer. This has been a tremendous battle, and they did it all. And they kept working, and they kept going. And I think they deserve this money. And it's small money, but they do a lot. They do more than a lot of us know. Especially when you come in here the first time, you, you're sitting in here the first year, it's, it's, it's all, you, you don't understand what all this is. But when you're around for a little bit, you know what's going on. These people work very hard. They do a very good job. I recommend that you do not vote yes for this amendment, but that you vote for the original budget. Support the original budget. These people deserve our support. Thank you. I'm Lindsay Wilson, I'm chairman of the board uh, here in Kingston. Um, this is a contentious issue. Um, I want to express the feelings uh, and the vote of the Board of Selectmen for Kingston uh, and frame the issue in the way that we saw. Um, this room in particular um, demonstrates what is at the root of this question, which is public service versus career. Everyone in here gives a tremendous amount of time to their community because we believe in it and we want to make it better. Uh, we serve on probably everyone's a selectman. Um, I'm on four other committees in town um, and give a lot of time to other things as well. And, and there's people who don't do government and still give a tremendous amount to their communities through coaching and <coughs> other things because they believe in public service and being a part of their community. And I think that applies as well on the county level. Um, there are people who are employed full-time at the county level. That's their career. That's their vocation. And they ought to be compensated for it. There are people who volunteer their time for their county. And while some level of compensation is appropriate for anyone's effort. Um, it's a matter of appropriateness. If you get to the point of benefits, if you get to the point of health insurance, you get to the point of a significant amount of money as being proposed. And I understand that it had been there at one point in time. Um, to me, it seems like it's going more in the direction of career versus public service. And I take nothing away from the amount of time that these people uh, give and vote to our county, but everyone in these seats is out at meetings a couple of nights a week probably. And we're doing it because this is our community and this is our county. Um, so I'm going to say while Kingston would consider a modest increase and an incremental increase perhaps, and you know, as, as was done previously, <coughs> measure results, uh, I would not be supportive at that point. <clears throat> Again, my name is Dan Sutherland, which is Vice Chair of Selectman Town of Whitman. I'm going to select them. I'm in my 15th year. I've been a member of the Plymouth County for all those years. I can remember about 10 years ago at least, 
when we were sitting in one of the uh, old courtrooms in Plymouth, down below, behind the, the commissioner's office. And times were hard, times were tough, we needed money, things weren't getting done. Um, I don't think any of you were sitting on the board, and again, you were selected at the time, I don't know. He was chair. I was chair, I was Ellen. Well, well, that's right. Anyway, it's all I know is You'll that never be Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. We, well, right. I know Ellen. <laughs> yes, yes, no Ellen. We argued about what the commissioners accomplished at that time. I'm talking about 10 years ago. And we're in tough times. Um, Troy, Troy and I made a motion that we were going to zero out the commissioners' line item because they weren't doing their job. But the least we could go, I think, was what, 7,000? 75. 75. That was the, the lowest we could go, according to law, right? So I made a motion, and it passed because they weren't doing their job. And at the time, the stipulation was, you get caught up, you get the job done, you do what you have to do, and we'll reinstall what you were making. At the time, I think they were making 26,000, maybe then 28. 28 around. So all we're doing is coming back and following what we said we were going to do 10 years ago, is once you brought the county back to where it was supposed to be and get the job done, one of the big issues was the audits. No audits were done. And yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it, and years went by, they never got it done. And all of a sudden, boom, it's all done. Now, as far as thinking that, it was said that you have commissioners here that might be in their first term or whatever. Think of uh, a state rep or a state senator that gets elected for the first time. They get a base salary and it's certainly more than 28000 a year. So I mean, the time that they serve, they've been serving uh, as a commissioner or as an elected official, I don't think it means anything. It's the fact that they are an elected official, and this is what we said that we were going to pay them and we were paying them 10 years ago. And now that they've done the job that we've asked them to do, and even more, right? I think it's time that we follow what we said we were going to do 10 years ago and reestablish their pay scale. So I would vote to not go with the vote that's on the floor now and go with the original vote. Everything Mr. Salvucci said was absolutely correct. I was there for that vote. I was sitting next to you yeah. for that vote. I think I seconded that vote. Probably did. I probably did. And I remember vividly saying, you know, these guys, you, folks, these guys can't do their job. I remember the dire straits the county was in. There's at least one community here that benefited through the purchase of property at rock bottom pricing because we had to sell property to maintain the budget. We were using one-time revenues to support it. To, we had a big discussion about that to support the operation. And the end goal wasn't just to have a budget. It was to, and as trivial as it sounds, it was to keep the oldest surviving county in the United States alive. That's what it was at the time. At least that's what it was explained. But nevertheless, we did say if you restore the services, you restore the fiscal strength, you get us to a point where we're comfortable, we'll, we'll give back the money to the commissioners. Now, since then, everybody's changed. They've done a great job. I never thought we'd be in a place, where, uh, in the place that we are today, where the county is actually surviving. I think we would have been turned over to the Commonwealth by now, frankly. I remember during our conversation, I, I raised my hand. One question I asked was, how do I annex Mount Poison to Bristol County since we're out of the water? And everybody laughed, but there, were, there was a lot, of, a lot of head shaking saying, yeah, well, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen to the county? Are we going to go away? And we didn't. The leadership team that's been put before us that we voted for has done a really good job. Mr. O'Brien has done a phenomenal job as treasurer. Uh, he came down uh, with Mr. Pallotta, not by choice, we didn't ask you to come down, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we had them come down, and my, and my, somebody had to, right? So my board, I'm the only member of the board who's ever met a commissioner from the county. They had never seen a commissioner come down or the treasurer come down and have a conversation with them about the fiscal strength of the services provided. Now, two of my board members are two of the, probably two of the biggest naysayers when it comes to different efforts that we pay for, the regionalization efforts. But by the same token, they walked out of that meeting saying, I didn't realize that's what they did for us. What else do we have to do to support them? 
And the one thing I did say was to support the budget as presented because I, I did make a commitment roughly 10 years ago to reinstate that, uh, that line. So I can say, on behalf of the town of Mount Boyce, that I would say that you defeat the amendment and support the budget as proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm Don Howard. I'm from the town of Hanson. I'm also a water commissioner as well as a selectman. These three members that have been working here for the last 10 years since I've been on the board have so far surpassed the amount of work that the one the commission has before us. And uh, Tuesday night we had a meeting, and my own board wouldn't go along with passing the budget for the for the commission. But as, after we got to discussing it, and I told them what they've done over the past 10 years, roughly, they came up with a compromise that maybe they can do it on three years instead of one year. Just do a third the 18th, a third the 19th, and the third the 20th, which make it look a lot better. Plus, it would increase their salary to the point where they were 10 years ago. And uh, I, would, I would urge people to vote no on this motion so that we can get through with the, the business of the, tonight. Thank you. I'm Alex Bizantin from the town of Abington. I've only been on this board for two years, and I've learned a lot in two years, believe me. Um, so I took it upon myself to do some research, and a lot of what I'm saying has already been said, but the high pay for the commission is prior to 09 was $28,258.47. That's equivalent to $32,000 today. It was then cut to where it is now at $15,000. The request before us is to bring the salary back to what it was and what it should be. Not the 32,000 that in reality it should be, but just the 28,000. We're talking about $13,000 per commissioner for a total of just under $40,000. For three people, not just one, but three, only 13,000 each. The current Board of Commissioners, along with the Treasurer and Deputy Treasurer, has turned this county around from bankruptcy. And you talk about positive results, just look at the positive results of the last couple of years. We have a $10 million budget before us, and we're talking about $40,000. I urge you to vote the budget as presented. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Matthew Fellow, and I'm from Miss Pembroke. And I wanted to make a, another proposal or an amendment. I don't know if that's allowed or an amendment, but. Why don't you talk about what you want to do, and I think we're going to. I don't want to get into amending amendments if we can avoid that. I guess it's technically not like we've ever Why don't you tell us what you have in mind? Oh, all right, similar to what Mr. Howard had said, I'd like to cut the pay raise in half and install that in one third amounts over the course of the three years. Thank you. I'd like to make that amendment to the motion. What? I'd like to make that as a form of an amendment to the motion. We have to go through the first one yeah. first. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to vote the first and then we can't we go to that if it's so you would want to proceed this motion and then we'll choose. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, oh, my name is Mike Mullen from the town of Rockland. And I just, um, a similar to the other folks here, I just um, want to uh, I'll speak in favor of uh, the budget as it is uh, currently. I mean, I think the budget as it is uh, currently, uh, really, in my view, uh, it reflects a vision as uh, where we want to uh, go as a county. We want the uh, county uh, to be sustainable. Um, in terms of uh, the leadership uh, that we have here in the uh, county, uh, when there are elections, uh, we want to attract uh, good, uh, qualified people uh, to run for those elections. And I think uh, with respect to the uh, three individuals uh, that we have, who we have right now, uh, that's who we do have, and I think uh, going back to eight, ten years ago, it, uh, it was really a 
a completely different uh, cast of characters, I think with the exception of you, Mr. Plata, and um, I say uh, a cast of characters uh, politely, um, but um, I think uh, where we are today, uh, we want the uh, county uh, to be sustainable, uh, like we want to attract, I mean, and I've seen in my work in government, uh, whether it's uh, been as my experience um, um, on the uh, Board of Selectmen in the town of Rock, in the town of Rock, and working for the city of Rockton, uh, working at uh, the State House. I mean, like I've seen each of the uh, commissioners out and around um, and during the day. Um, you know, they're serving as uh, commissioners, they're serving as outreach folks, they're serving as lobbyists, uh, advocating on the uh, like, uh, on behalf of the uh, county's interests up on Beacon Hill on a regular basis, and they're doing the job. And um, you know, as a volunteer selectman, I'm I'm the first one, as many of us here, to take exception to the fact that um, you know there are people um, in different uh, town or other uh, positions who are paid, and um, I often take exception to that uh, you know, because we all do work so hard. We volunteer. We're out uh, three or four nights a week away from our families. Um, I'm here tonight away from my uh, two young twins who are not even four months old yet. But, um, you know, uh, but like in this case, um, they've obviously over the past eight years, uh, they've proven themselves. Uh, they have delivered a real value. Uh, to the county and to each of our uh, communities, and um, you know they're out there. They're out there all the time, and this really, um, in many cases, uh, becomes like a full-time job, depending on what is happening during the year, what's happening at the state house. So, um, I just wanted to speak in favor of uh, them, uh, the work they do, um, in the budget as it is right now. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nate Parker, Town of Rochester, Board of Selectmen. We follow parliamentary rules for order. Roberts. Well, I'm going to step back and down for the honest, but I believe we have to take a vote on the current motion before we can't take an amendment to that motion. You can under Roberts' rules of order. You know, I'm just looking at the well, board. Board. Well, I'm, I don't see any harm in voting this first and then looking at the details. I'm not in order. I request the right to make an amendment. So the motion is on the floor. Okay, I'm going to ask the attorney how many seconds. Thank you. So I, I understand the request to amend, but it, it's seemingly unending. Uh, if we amend the original motion and we amend the amendment, you can certainly make your own motion without harming your interests. So I, I would recommend we uh, vote on the original motion and then uh, take up some potential amendments. Do you want to tell us what it is you're wanting to do? I want to amend the motion for 15000 to increase it to $19,250, which would be approximately a third of the proposed, and then, as the gentleman said, do a third, a third, and a third over the next three years to bring them up to where they should be. Okay. I do want to point out that this board cannot bind future can't bind the future so you, can can you can only do the motion for tonight. Right. And, 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 you know, so just like... Ten years, however many years ago, eight years ago, or whatever it was, that, that the then members, we heard from some of them who were still around, their intention was to restore down the road and trying to be determined. Um, that also is not binding on us. So um, I, I'm not going to take an amendment to the amendment. Um, and if somebody wants to sue me later, um, <laughs> I, then uh, the county can deal with that. Um, I believe also. Well, I, I certainly haven't seen that. that. And then take a on top of that we'll the Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Nancy Hollenbeck from Lakeville, and I'm going to give you the um, opinion of the Board of Selectmen in Lakeville. Um, similar to what Ellen just mentioned, we do not believe that we are bound by decisions of past boards. Um, in that regard, Lakeville had a four-hour budget discussion on one line item at town meeting on Monday night. So we are um, a very fiscally conservative community. 
And what we believe, as we do with a lot of our new employees, when we post a job offering, which has a set salary range, we don't expect our employees or our new employees to come in and try to negotiate that salary after they've been brought into the position. Um, as an elected position, we all know what our compensation is. Um, there is a body by which we can increase it, which is this body, but the town of Lakeville does not believe that when there's an elected position and there is a set compensation level, that that should be changed at this time. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bob Sullivan. I'm the City Council President of the City of Brockton. Uh, I've been a Councilor Lodge in the City of Brockton for 12 years, and I've sat on the advisory board for uh, over 10 years. I'm going to ask the show of hands who was here that night, because I was here. And as you recall, we didn't want to be here, because the commissioners hated each other. Oh. It was unprofessional, and it was, quite honestly, um, uh, painful to be here. It was a spectator sport. It was. You know, it might not be binding. I'm an attorney myself. It might not be binding, but a promise is a promise. You have to adhere to a promise that was made in good faith. Now, at that time, the vote was made because those people in that job were not doing the adequate job. They just weren't doing it. So we cut it to the bare minimum. Now, the fact is, the revenues right now speak for themselves. And these three individuals are representing 27 communities that make up Plymouth County. I serve one community, the city of Brockton, I get paid 10 grand. I'm out every night, they could be out every night. I mean, I think you just have to do the right thing. So I'm here tonight just as one member saying that I don't support the motion on the floor, I support the budget as presented. Thank you. If everybody doesn't mind, I'm gonna sit from here. I'm still recovering from spine surgery. Um, back probably a month and a half ago, my town administrator called me and says, Alan, what's going on with Plymouth County? And I said, what are you talking about? Well, I've got a letter here from Plymouth, the town manager, alerting us uh, that we should vote against uh, the budget. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. So I read the letter. I was kind of more than disappointed. I didn't think it was proper, actually, uh, the way it was done. And I don't know about anybody else, but if someone tells me something, I look at like 80 different directions first and do homework to make sure I know what's going on. Because uh, everybody, and we all do it every day, someone comes and complains to us. They're not really telling us what the real truth is. There's something else way behind it that has a different agenda or a different reason. And a lot of times it's something that really isn't, you know, legitimate acceptable. So I spent some time and found out what the gentleman here talked about, about decreasing the salary with the promise that it would come back when it was, when it was profitable. My board is as tight as any board right now because all of us, you know, at any time we can be underwater financially if we have no idea what the state's going to do because there's no set budget. Federal government's not going to budget until November. Uh, if Massachusetts as a state, which we just talked the state on a couple of days ago, if they change the health care program, Massachusetts could be looking at $750 million to $1 billion shortfall of health care, and that's going to come out of everything else that sits there. So none of us are very, should be saying they're very comfortably being stable. But at the same time, this was made as a promise. The money is here as far as the new is. And, and my board basically, I explained what it was, but I threw it back and forth, and they all agreed to basically support the budget as the, because they felt that these people had actually, for the first time they ever heard, someone actually took a pay increase. When we have union employees in the town, and we ask for some kind of, you know, compromise or whatever, they sacrifice their young. They never give back anything. So at this particular point here, he's to me, ethically, morally, <coughs> a group of commissioners, no matter who they were and who they are today, made an agreement to go ahead and take the pay cut to basically support and have this particular county survive with the idea they would get the money back sometime in the future. I think that should be on it. I think it's ethically, morally, correct thing to do. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm Jeff I'm Helen from the Town of Carver, as you know. Um, my I'm also representing the Town of Carver, a board of selectmen. Um, they left me holding the bag. They said, all right, well, we won't make a decision tonight. We're going to let you hear everyone tonight, and we're going to allow you to make the decision on our behalf. But you know what direction we want to go in. I'm only, what, 1.59% of the vote. So it doesn't mean a lot. But I can say with conviction, um, these guys have worked really hard. However, I'm a fiscal conservative, and 
I've been very honest with these guys, seeing what they've done with cleaning up the audits when I first became a selectman, we were still in kind of a, a mess. And they worked diligently, working very hard hours, um, and hearing about the average salaries and commissions over the state. But because I'm a fiscal conservative, I asked the questions about the registry of deeds. I'm still not totally convinced about the registry of deeds increases. But I do say that these guys, I, I, our Plymouth County commissioners, they, we were on the brink of losing our county in the first place. But I do say that we still have to be prudent. These guys deserve to be compensated, but I do think that we should do it incrementally. Over the past three years, I think you'll have more support for it. Thank you. Before you go, Mike, um, you just you mentioned the comparison to what commissioners make in other counties, and and you don't need to stay up there. I just because you mentioned that, um, I did ask Frank Basler, the county administrator, to um, prepare something that would let us see where our commissioners are compensated relative to other county commissioners. So it just seemed like a good segue Thank to you. have that handed out now, and then. Um, once that's passed around, if, if you could just explain how you went about doing it, because counties are not um, as as apples to apples um, as sometimes uh, you know state level officials are. I have no Everybody have one. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairwoman. Um, Can you just wait long enough for the average part of the one year to explain? Thanks. Thank you. Good morning. Do you have to get So Chairman Allen asked me to uh, look at the comps for uh, around the, con the, uh, the Commonwealth uh, for um, the Commission of Salaries. And what we did was, what I did was, uh, you know, this is a way to not look at things in a vacuum. So to me, assessing value involves looking not only at what's being done, but what others have paid for it, just like you would in a real estate or other uh, endeavor. So uh, this work here is two, two, uh, one graph on, uh, with the uh, axis uh, on the left with the dollar amount. Uh, the first grouping is the commissioner's salary alone. So you can see from Barnstable, the first column, they actually are approximately the same as the Plymouth County Commissioners are right now, which is 15,000. Uh, we then go to Bristol uh, we're, um, in the $34,000 uh, range. And then uh, the actual um, Norfolk is $43,000. Plymouth County right now commissioners earn $15,150. The green column is what is requested in the full budget uh, as of now, which is 28000 But then I said, there's another story here, and the other story is uh, all of the key leadership um, salaries, because um, the commissioners here take a very active role in day-to-day -day working with me, giving me direction and making sure that the team is doing uh, what they should be and properly focused. I said, so what happens if you look at the leadership team of all the counties? And when I did the analysis, it uh, comes in on the graph on the right. So on the graph on the right is uh, the commissioner's salary and the administrator's salary, and then the advisory board salary, or in Barnstable, it's the legislative uh, assembly salary. So uh, in Barnstable, they have a little bit different charter. They have 15 instead of the 27, and uh, they each make 1,000 dollars each plus each of those members uh, uh, receive full health care benefits so um, this is only a, a representation of the actual salaries uh, even with the full restoration to 28,000 Plymouth County would have the lowest commissioner and administrative costs uh, out of all the counties uh, that, uh, that are exist today I did take out Nantucket uh, county and Dukes County. They are real counties uh, uh, like Plymouth, but because they're townships uh, in, in small areas of the islands, uh, they act differently. The selectmen actually hold 
both roles as county commission commissioners and selectmen. Through you, Madam Chair, any questions? Or? Yeah, I just, I had asked Frank to um, prepare something that would give us some context for what this position pays in other places. So thank you for that. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm the Chairwoman, Mike Bradley, uh, Marshfield Chair of the Board of Selectmen, uh, Vice Chair of this board. So, the first time I heard about um, the increase in salaries, I received a, a couple calls from, from other selectmen. Uh, some were in support, some were not so nice. So, I did the research on it. Uh, as most of you have, have heard today, that about 10 years ago was a horrible, horrible situation in the county. And I wasn't <coughs> in office at that time. But I, I took the information, I looked at it, I spoke to some of the people that were, and they said it was so bad, they had never in the past even considered reducing the salary basically to zero, but they couldn't do it because the statute wouldn't allow them to do it. So uh, I know that, they, that we can't be bound, and we can't bind future uh, boards that come here. So what we're really here to talk about is, is to deserve the salary increase as proposed. And uh, I wholeheartedly support it. I am one town, I represent one town, and it's hard. And I'm, like most of you, I'm out busting my butt trying to get it done. They represent 27 communities. And I think it's only fair to pay them what they're worth. What we're asking for, or what's proposed, or what they've asked for, I believe is completely fair and reasonable, given the fact that they're doing 27 times the work than I am. In addition to that, um, what do we say if we don't want to pay the county commissioners what I think is a fair and reasonable wage. We say to people that are thinking about running for this office, forget it. You're only going to get 7,500 bucks or 14, five, or 15 grand or whatever it is, and you're really pushing people away from running for county office that can't fully commit or donate all the time. I can't donate all my time. I have a sole practice. I need to work, but I try to balance it. I think the commissioners here are trying to do that well. They all have families. So if you don't increase the salary to at least, and I don't want to say increase, to restore it to where it was at a horrible time in this community, you're really saying to them, you have not done the job, you're not getting the job done uh, that was done in 2008. It's just ridiculous. 2008, in that range, it wasn't done. Now we have a surplus. It is being done. And if you don't pay them, you're really not going to get a greater, a broader, diverse group of candidates in the future. I'd ask you to defeat the amendment, vote the budget as is. Can you also read that? <clears throat> Did you want to share that? Oh, excuse me, I'll read it. Uh, I forgot that. Thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> Some of you guys, I'll just finish it here. Is that, Can you be down by your mic? Yeah, sure. I received, <coughs> I received a, a note from uh, George Noel, the business manager for OPEIU Local 6 uh, asked me to read it. It states that the OPEIU Local 6, the sole bargaining agent for the employees at the Plymouth County uh, Registry of Deed, wholeheartedly support the increase of the stipend for the Plymouth County Commissioner signed George Nolan. I just thought people might want to know that. Uh, good evening, Mary Powell. Hang on. I'm not going to repeat what's already said. Um, our board, um, we were asked not to vote coming into this. We honored that. Uh, we did have some discussion, and I would say that the tenor of our conversation was very much like uh, what was talked about in Kingston. Um, I would just bring up one point that we talked about that hasn't been brought up this evening. Um, you know, there's been a lot of focus on restoring, and you know, there are different points of view on that. Um, some people feel like that was a promise that was made. Others perhaps feel like, you know, as one town meeting can't bind another, so one advisory board. But one thing that our board of selectmen talked about was the message of an 85% pay increase in one year to the commissioners and what message that would be sending to all the very hardworking people in Plymouth County. Um, to members of the Registry of Deeds, and you know, we even heard tonight that you know, in the county, and, and the commissioners have done a very good job with this, we're asking people to do more with less. We're asking them to be creative. We're asking them to um, take on new responsibilities. And as we're starting to emerge to be on stronger financial footing, you know, 
I don't know that the people that work in the Registry of Deeds or anywhere else in Plymouth County are going to say to themselves, well, you know, 10 years ago, the commissioners were making this much and we should restore it. Our board thought that they would think, wow, an 85% increase for the folks in charge. And that was difficult for us. Um, I'd make one other point, too, because procedurally, what I understand is we're going to be voting on this, um, on this amendment first. So um, I might just ask that before it comes time to vote, we could be really clear on sort of what we're voting because I think there are a couple of ideas circulating around in the room and we just all want to be clear on, you know, sort of where we are in the process. Thank yes. you. Yes. It seems that, do you have something new and different? Absolutely. Okay, because then I want to get a vote on this question. Yes, it's, it's really not about the money and it should not be about the money. It's not about the money to any one of you advisory board members. We all serve in our communities. I get paid zero. A lot of you get paid zero. Some of you get three or $4,000. It's not about the money. And it's really not about the money to them. And I think they'll, they'll say that. Whether we approve the 15,000, whether it's 20,000 or the 28,000 that's proposed, I mean, their life isn't gonna change because of that. But and yes, we should compensate them for what they, what they do and, and what perhaps they're, they're worth and so forth and the work that they do. But I was at that meeting 10 years ago when the, I was the assistant treasurer at that time. As a matter of fact, the assistant treasurer's position was even on the line that night where a commissioner wanted to do away with that. And maybe even some of you were in favor of that, but it never really came to a vote. Those were really dark times, really dark times. Yes, there have been some financial improvements with the county, um, and I think that there have been a lot of increases in some of the ungraded positions tonight, and some good increases, and, and justifiably so. Do the commissioners deserve some sort of an increase? Perhaps. But I, don't, I do think going from 15 to 28 is probably a little bit too much. At this time, I would be in favor, certainly, of an amendment that has been proposed by a couple of my colleagues here. Um, therefore, I'll probably support the amendment in hopes that we come back with another amendment to give them an increase as we have to a lot of the other ungraded positions. Okay. Um, I think it would work a little differently than that. Um, so first of all, we're going to take a vote on the motion. And I think there's a point of clarification. The current salaries of the commissioners is not 15000 even. It's 15,150 or one? Yes, 150. 15,150. Can you read back a motion that Mr. Mahoney from Plymouth made, Nancy? Because I don't know if you said to reduce the proposal by 13,000 each, which would change it to 15,000 even, or if you stated it a different way. I'll amend my motion to have it reduced by $12,850. Now, how can you do that if she yeah. with me? No, we're going to have to vote. We're going to have to vote tonight. He's the original, he made the original amendment. So Is that a choice? You, 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 you want it accurate, Alan, or we can leave it at 15 grand, whatever you want. Since he made the original amendment, you can entertain he can his withdraw it. To withdraw and, I guess, make his amendment to um, reflect the actual salary. But how did he work? Did he work to keep it as is? Approve the budgets, but keep the commissioner's salary, salaries the same. At okay, so there's no need for that. Okay, so what we're going to take a vote on is whether to keep the commissioner's salaries um, at their current level of $15,150. So if you think it should be anything higher than that, be it what's proposed or something in between, because we have several people who've expressed the idea of doing something but not no increase. So. No. Okay, one more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Only because Troy is the ranking number of these I've sat here for the past 27 years. I just got elected for my 10th term in the Holocaust, and I was appointed when I first got elected to reflect them because nobody else wants to count to the advisory board. <laughs> I said in that through several meetings prior to the meeting, people come through. The audit, we had hired an individual to do the audit for Plymouth County and the commission as well. We going to the advisory board, fired that individual so they couldn't get it done. The night in question, they were cutting the salaries of the treasurer's office, 
trying to get rid of the assistant treasurer's office. They cut the salaries at the registry. Every place but themselves, they didn't feel the pain. The reason that we decided, and I was the one that presented the proposal, along with my compadre here, to cut the salaries to zero. And we were told that 7,500 was the lowest that we could go. <coughs> now, I, uh, I'm friends with everybody sitting in that corner over there. And I know several of the selectmen in town, I've known them for years. But it's not about the money that I'm talking about. It's about rewarding an individual for doing something that nobody else had done for the last 20 years. And that's to get the county back on a level plan. Because if you remember straight, there was legislation sent down from the state to vote whether we should get rid of it or not. There's no good economic time to get raises to anyone. There's no certain good time. We can't predict the future. We don't know if these three people are still going to be in office for the next few years. But the fact is that that night we asked that we take the salary away from them, 7,500, and should things improve budgetary-wise and everything, we, don't, we no longer sell property to keep our budget stable. We no longer have to spend money on lawyers because of lawsuits because commissioners were inactive and that's what they're supposed to do. I mean, those are worth, those are valuable things to have. You know, I would think that you would, there are some of you just been elected, some of you have been over a couple of weeks. Now, I'm going to tell you, my board members felt the same way. But you know what they said? They said that, um, I'm not too comfortable with the raises, but what does the county commissioners do? You know, and I think, I think that's the key to the whole situation. If you don't understand what is being done, because I have the same question asked for me. What do you do as a selectman? I've got that everything up to picking up trash off the street, but not everybody sees that, not everybody knows that. I belong to five committees for, my, for the town of the Halifax. My point is, is that we reward individuals there are people who work for the state and work for the place that automatically get increases and they never show up for work. There are other people that do show up for work and don't do anything when they get there. We have individuals who have other jobs and other things to do. They put the time and effort in to make this county one of the strongest ones going through all that and changes. I, I support the fact that we should vote for the original budget based on the fact that the people have performed and done their jobs. And they didn't cause the money to be cut in the first place. They weren't even in office at the time it was cut. So let's not, not reward them for doing a good job. Okay, so I'm gonna close off the debate on this amendment. Um, as you'll recall from my opening slideshow, it isn't one town, one vote. So we can't just raise hands and, and do it that simply. It has to be, it's based on our our communities assess real estate value relative to the total assessed value of the county. So everyone has their little percentage, you may know what yours is. So the first thing I'd like to ask is what percentage of the county is actually represented here tonight? 91.32. That's got to be the record, so thank you all for coming. <coughs> so that means we would need what for a majority? 45 point six seven. Well, I want to sound 45.67. 45.67. Okay, so I'm going to do a roll call, and I believe you have a spreadsheet that, oh, you have a spreadsheet that you're going to put up that's going to keep a tally as we go so we know. Am I right? This is how you've got available for us to do? Um, if you want to say what a guest vote is or what a no vote is. Yeah, I'll get to that. I just want to explain the procedure first why I'm not just having people raise their hands. It'll just take a second to come yeah. up. So um, Jeff Welch, our deputy treasurer, has, you know, created the spreadsheet and he will input each vote so that we see a running total of where we stand. So as soon as that's ready. Okay, so again. 
a yes vote. A yes vote means you want to freeze commissioner salaries where they are. And if that passes, we will be done with this budget line. So a yes vote keeps it exactly where it is today. A no vote means we then entertain something else as the salary amount for the commissioners. Okay, so a no vote leaves it up in the air. A yes vote leaves it level exactly where it is. Is everybody clear on that vote? No, no vote. Your what amendment is vote? to keep them flat with where they are yes. in fiscal 17. By, by default, wouldn't that approve the $28,000 if it would the no vote? No, no, no. 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 It only is a vote okay. on the amendment. You have to go back to the original vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Abington. No. Bridgewater. Yes. Brockton. No. Carver. No. Duxbury. Hold it. Hold on. Hold on. No. Dakota. No. Carver. Carver was no. No. Duxbury. Yes. Is East Bridgewater here? No. No. Halifax. No. Hanover. No. Hanson. No. Hingham. Yes. Hull. Not present. Kingston. Yes. Lakeville. Yes. Marion. Not here. Marshfield. No. Matapoison. No. Middleborough. No. I'm going to vote last. Pembroke. Yes. Uh, Plymouth. Yes. Plimpton. No. Rochester. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to Have we gotten them yet? Is okay, it all set? Plimpton? Plimpton was. No. 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 Rochester. No. Rockland. No. Situate. Yes. Wareham. No. West Bridgewater. Not here. Not here. Whitman. No. And Norwell is voting no on the amendment. So what is our result? Uh, 45.25 in the affirmative, 46.07 in the negative. Can you say that again, please? Let's go down to the bottom, Jeff. Let's see. Yeah, it fails. <laughs> amendment fails. Okay, so the amendment fails to pass. Yes. So we are now back. Mm -hmm. So the proposal to have no raise for the commissioners has failed. So we now move back to what we're going to pay them. I will take a motion either on the existing budget or on an alternative. Madam Chair. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we set the commission's salary at twenty thousand dollars for this Second. Twenty thousand dollars. Fiscal eight. Each. Twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, fiscal eighteen. Okay, so that would be an increase of four thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars for each of them. So, so I have a motion and a second. You have to make a motion and a second to mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any discussion on the proposal to Increase the salaries to twenty thousand. Yes. Brian Barthelmus, Town of Hanover. I, I moved into Plymouth County eighteen years ago. I moved from an area of the state where the county government was eliminated. And when I moved here, I was full endorsement to eliminate all county government in the state. Um, since I got involved in, in Hanover Town Government, I've served on the advisory committee for seven years, past four and a half years on the Hanover Board of Selectmen. <coughs> and, you know, I, I think we need to stop playing games here with these numbers. I, I like you, when I heard that, that increase, I said, I can't, with, in good conscience, vote that increase. Uh, but as, as I looked at the history, and actually looked at the article in the Patriot Ledger that talked about what this, uh, you know, people that served on this advisory committee voted. And 
let's do the right thing. Let's do the right thing. The, the level of service that you're getting from the county government is much better than when I moved to Hanover 18 years ago. Um, the service that we've been getting in Hanover uh, with the services from the county government has been very high. So look at the level of service that you're getting. You're getting hung up in whether we should give them 5000 this year or 5000 next year. Pay them what it's worth, what the job is worth, and the level of service that we're getting. Because if you're not, the reason why you brought it down before is because the people in that job were not doing the job, and you brought it down. So let's put it back where it belongs. Would anyone else like to speak? Just one yeah. We are sitting here, and let me ask a question. Who does it hurt if we give them the $28,000 a year? It doesn't hurt the town. It doesn't hurt the employees because they're the their creatures. It doesn't hurt the budget. <laughs> Why not? I move that we give them the $28,000 and restore it because I'd like to keep my word. And I know a lot of people have done better for them than another, but in fact, it's important. I've served on this board a very long time, and I just would like to believe that we have a group of individuals who care about their constituents. And if it was hurting my town, or hurting the residents of the town, to give these people this money, I would not vote it. But it's not doing that. So we need to look at the full picture. Yeah. Uh, one thought you may want to keep in your mind. If 10 years ago, or at the time, if the commissioners then were doing their job, they would have been making the amount of money that uh, we wouldn't even be here today discussing this. They would be making the 28 change. The fact that they weren't doing their job is why we punished them for not doing their job. What I'm saying, if in fact, that board, or that board of commissioners was doing their job, they'd be much higher than what they're asking for today because they would have been at that 10 years ago and over the years there might have been an increase on a yearly basis. So think about it. You know, maybe if in fact we didn't do that, they'd be looking at uh, 35,000 each piece. Over the 10 years, get the small raise every year. Then they get a 3% or a 2% raise on a yearly basis. So I think by restoring what they would have, would have had 10 years ago is we're flattening out their raise because they're not getting a raise. They're getting a raise because we took the money away from them. Not them, but the positions at the time. It's the only reason why we're here today. We took their money away. Now we're restoring it. If we never did that in the beginning, we wouldn't have this discussion. I just want to say, it's, it's not their money. It's the people's money. So let's just be clear about that to start. Um, I, did, I wasn't here 10 years ago to hear that promise, and, and I appreciate people of integrity. Uh, so I completely respect that position. But, you know, we, the Selectman in Kingston, manage a $46 million a year budget. We get 800 bucks for it. It's kind of nice, pays for your signs if you run and what have you. But it's not why we do it. It's not why you do it. A lot of people get nothing. My understanding is that the commissioners also have jobs and that there's full-time staff. There's a difference between the two. Just because a position was paid something at one point doesn't mean you're entitled to it for life. So, I, you know, I don't know what the motivation is. If I am a commissioner, I want to come forward and incrementally ask for your support. I, I mean, to go from the 15 to the 28 in one request, just to me, what message are you sending to the communities that you serve? This is public service. So I would certainly support a modest increase. But I hope that the commissioners don't feel entitled or that it's their money. Um, Matt Jones, Matt. Okay, and then just I'm going to let I, I appreciate the fact that it is the people's money, but at 78 grand, 
the work they've done over the past 10 years, it's well worth 28 grand. People are getting good value for their dollar, 28 grand. Thank you. I sat back for a couple hours here and listened to the back and forth. I can be honest with you, I was selecting for six years and I sat in those chairs and I probably would have been uh, a no-vote. Uh, I sat in Ellen's chair for four years. It was I that cut the salaries. I made the recommendation. The executive board went along with it. We tried to get it to zero. It was a state statute brought to us and prevented it. <clears throat> we made a promise that it would go back. The, the selectman from Lakeville said, you know what the salary is when you run for office? I know what the salary was. It was $28,000 and it was a promise. I ran because I thought I could get the county fixed in a year. It took me four years. And this is the last piece. During those four years, we eliminated a 1.2 structural deficit on a $10 million budget. We eliminated through state legislation, which is endless number of meetings up at the state house, as indicated by the gentleman from Rockland, the elimination of a maintenance of effort payment that you were paying for a jail that you didn't own, that the state took. And by the way, during that same nine-year period, the state's uh, the jail's budget's gone up 35%, and the county's budget's gone down 2%. Stabilization fund. I got here, we didn't have a stabilization fund. We were not allowed to by law. We had to spend it. That 700000 we just talked about, we would have spent that two years ago. We would have hired people at the registry, laid people off at the registry. A cycle that had gone on and on and on because we were not allowed to save it. It took us four years to get the legislature to allow us to have a savings account. Since we've established the savings account, we've put money in it each of the two years. We've corrected the problem with courthouse rent. And Mr. McKinnon, you're right. That was the best meeting I ever went to when we zeroed out the courthouse on and the Chief Justice of the court system came running down here. You can't say we're off the budget. You, what are you going to do? We're going to add a lot of court on. You're not paying your bills. We restored it a week before the fiscal year started. And they've been paying on time ever since. We, we started PCOT. And as, as we started PCOT, we looked at our own OPEP problem. And as we indicated, we've reduced it by $19 million. We established a website. Probably the last governmental entity on the planet to have a website. Nobody knew where we were, how to contact us. It was, it was archaic. We have labor contracts with all our unions for the first time in a decade. We've sold 1,350 cars. We provide assistance to your housing authorities that are independent of your towns. We do their gas bill reports. We, we buy bulk appliances for them, we buy bulk ice melt for them. We got a dredge from the state. We hope it gets used. It was controversial when we got it. We're trying to get it used, not only for the coast, but for the ponds. Most of our towns have pond problems, weeds, the dredge is available. And then we get to infrastructure. I'm a builder, I'm actually an OPM, and, and I, I found it interesting <clears throat> and we're talking about uh, time and the commissioners. I've missed many OPM opportunities because I'm a commissioner. Can't bid on this town because I have conflict. Couldn't bid on that town because I was up at the state house. This job takes a lot out of all three of us. It's not like being in a board of selectmen. I was a selectman for six years. I've done town government, like Brian, for 25 years at zero pay. This isn't about pay. The county buildings, as an OPEP, as an OPM, are deplorable. Four years ago when I got here, there was no maintenance. We were spending a million five on maintenance. It took us four years to weed out the bad employees, keep them the good employees, set up infrastructure programs, and begin the process of energy conservation in every building. We've completed half of the Hingham District Courthouse. We've completed uh, ADA requirements in the Wareham Courthouse, 
and we've completed a complete study of the Brockton Superior Courthouse. During that period, we met at least three dozen times with CGM, the Chief Justice of Administration and Maintenance of the courts. Because of <coughs> our consistent whining in the other counties, this 47 county courthouses out of the 150 courthouses in the state of Massachusetts, 47 were in, owned by counties. You own three of them. No maintenance has been done since 1978 when the county was no longer allowed to uh, administer the courthouses and the court employees that were taken and given to the state. We were successful in getting all three of our courthouses in phase 1A of the new courthouse rebuilding program, a $3.2 billion program. And the first phase is $565 million, which is going to be voted in this fiscal year. All three of our courthouses are getting 15 to $25 million uh, upgrades. That's your courthouses. And that is something the Commission has worked on. The Registry of Deeds, your brand new Registry of Deeds, you voted on the, 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 the uh, mortgage payment, your bond payment, just recently. The Registry of Deeds lost its brand new child. It's only seven years old, eight years old, nine years old, whatever. 20 years before it should have, because it wasn't maintained. The County Commission has found a way to replace it. Cooperative Extension serves 800 children right now in every single community that you have on a meager staff of four. It had 27 employees 25 years ago. We don't need 27 employees. We're doing the best we can with four. Cell towers. Did you know you own two cell towers? Bet you didn't know it. Because when we got here, I asked where the rents were. No one had collected rents in the cell towers. It's been corrected, you now get $37,000 a year for your cell towers. You also get $33,000 a year from Entergy because if Pilgrim decides to have a burp and they have to remotely control it, the control room is underneath the county administrator's office. There's a backup control room in our building, and that's why that building was built. We did, we've done a lot, and I, I would appreciate it if you recognize what we have done not for us, but for the office of county commissioner. Because the county will come back. It's going to come back even far greater than what we've done. What we've done is put the fire out. Somebody else is going to carry the water further. Because the town of Plymouth can't make it on its own. The town of Lakeville can't make it on its own. I know Hingham and Hanover and Norwell can't make it on its own. Hingham's already started a regional initiative with their 911 center. Duxbury also started a regional initiative with a 911 center. All those things would have been done countywide because we got a grant to do it 10 years ago, but the county commissioners never followed through. Those are things that should be done by the county, and there's a whole list more. I want to thank you for your time, and I want to thank you for your spirit of debate, and I want to thank the town of Plymouth for sending that letter because it brought the county forward. We've had a wonderful debate tonight. It's awesome. And I'm really excited about it, because now you know the county's here, now you can ask us for what you need, and now it's our turn to deliver. Thank you. I came in tonight undecided what I wanted to do on this. And so I thank you all for your comments. Um, and I thank Commissioner Block for his um, reminder of all the things that have happened. I got out of the advisory board towards the end of the um, inexcusably bad and responsible confusing division. Um, I, I certainly think they should get a raise. I'm, uh, I've had a very hard time with such a large increase in one year, which I have told all the county employees. Um, I you know, predicted that we would have a long debate about this when I first sat down and helped them with the budget back in February, January. Um, I, as I'm saying, I don't think I could get to 28, but I certainly think that 20 is too low. And I think based on what we were just reminded of, the real estate they've done, what the future of our land has been, 
I don't know, maybe you guys have had to do that as selectmen in your communities to do that kind of a turnaround. Uh, I'm happy to say Norwell's never been in that bad of shape, but um, I mean, the county was essentially bankrupt. The budget's now lower than it was whatever, eight, 10 years ago. Um, it, it's beyond anything we've had to do. I, I can also attest to the fact that the, um, the work of the State House has been enormous, hugely time consuming. I have um, gone along with them on a few occasions to help with the testimony. It is something beyond what we have to do as a one, and it doesn't have any of these things. So, um, I'm going to suggest that we vote no on 20,000 and consider a higher amount. So that's, that's just my personal opinion. I do think we're ready to vote. So, uh, was there a second? Yes, there was. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the motion is to increase the commissioner's salaries to 20,000. So if you want it to be 20,000, vote yes. If you want it to be some other number, vote no. All right. Abington. No. Bridgewater. Yes. Brockton. No. Carver. No. Dustbury. Yes. Halifax. No. Hanover. No. Hanson. No. Hano. Yes. Yes. Lakeville. Yes. Marion. No, oh, sorry. Marshfield. No. Metaphorical. No. Middleborough. No. Pembroke. Yes. Plymouth. Yes. Clinton. No. Rochester. Yes. Rockland. Uh, no. Situate. Yes. Birmingham. No. Whitman. No. Rural Mounds. Uh, the motion carries 46.43 to 44.89. Okay. So, um, as a result of having salaries of 20,000 rather than 28,000, we now have three times 8,000. I'm going to make a motion um, that we um, appropriate that we put 24,000 additional dollars into the line item for legal services. Um, there's a fair amount of litigation going on, and um, I just think that's a safe place to put it. Second. Second to discussion. Sure. Yeah. Um, just a question. I know we've lost our longtime county attorney. Just what's the process that's going to go forward to replace that? Are we save, are we going to save money, or I mean, this county attorney is pregnant. I don't think I had a chance to answer that. I didn't realize you were going to do that. That's okay. No, I'm not, I'm not going to comment that I look like I was a reporter. Right. Yeah. It's a small notebook. I mean, actually, I worked for Mark Day for three years, so our office is uh, still kind of carrying on with the commissioners right now. Um, there are a lot of legal um, problems that are coming up. If you think that uh, that might be helpful. Um, but for right now, things are kind of stay in the status quo. Uh, just, I'm a female, and Mark's now a superior court judge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on up, sir. Can you, um, Can you come to the podium? Absolutely. <laughs> now we have crowds. The surplus, I mean, you know, sitting back there is spontaneously, I think, a good reaction to go to a whole dead board and to a stabilization account. But you suggested legal fees. Can we have an update on all the lawsuits that are currently going on? What the county has going on, specifically the ones in between the town of Plymouth and the county of Plymouth, and where are we in the South Street Parent Association? Uh, Madam Chair? Uh, I, I think it's a matter that should. Madam Chair, for you, if it's a pending matter as an attorney, I would discuss that in public. Yeah. I, was, I was going to tell you I'm not going to discuss that in, in public. Yeah. For, the for the advice of counsel, but you know, it will work its way through the system and we will be updated when we're allowed to update you. Yes. I'm going to agree with both. I'm glad 
on putting it towards OPEP. I think that would be the more prudent measure. I know Matt Joyce would be put together. We put a fair amount of money aside, you know, essentially for two point three million right now. And it's something we should be considering. But one thing that we and I appreciate the generous donation to the recovery center, five thousand dollars. I know in the town of Matt Joyce we have several recurring lines. We make donations to different organizations that we're part of. I would consider taking part of that and putting a line for regional services or somewhere within the budget if we can carve out another five or seven hundred, uh, sorry, seventy five hundred dollars possibly as a recurring um, contribution to the uh, recovery center on an annual basis. I'm not, it's not in the form of motion, but I would just ask you to consider so that. Let's put it towards the opioid entity. I would say, as a, as a county resource, I think I can speak on behalf of other towns that have had opioid issues within their communities. I think it would be relatively prudent to put aside a sum of money that would go to the recovery center as a contribution of the county, which is well within our right to do as a county in our budget. Um, I think it's the least we could do since we have an unforeseen surplus for this year and most notably coming for next year based on budget. So. I just want to be sure I'm clear on what your idea is so that everybody knows. Give them money, take it away from the 28000 you should put towards the... So you would put... I'm sorry. So the Deputy Treasurer has just informed me. Thank you, sir. I've been really loud tonight, by the way. Um, <laughs> under next, uh, 99 Special Accounts, Line 15, Human Services, to add a line within that for the clinic. Recovery center. And so, how much you would want to do the whole twenty-four thousand? I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say the whole twenty. I think it's the twenty-four. I wouldn't say the whole twenty-four. I would look at seventy-five hundred, five thousand. So we're going to leave it up to the uh, the advisory board to discuss further. And since it's your motion, Madam Chair, you could amend as such. I, I would like, and I, I'm sorry to put myself in this position, but I have a chance to think about it ahead of time. Um, Thirty-nine thousand dollars towards the OPEB liability specifically is kind of a drop in the bucket, as most of you have probably learned. The best way to address your OPEB liability is to bring it down by negotiating changes in what you're promising for your retirees as opposed to throwing, you know, thousands of dollars at multi-millions of dollars. So my perspective is we wouldn't get a lot of bang for our buck putting it there, which doesn't mean I, I object to it being somewhere other than legal, but I don't think we'd get much bang for our buck out of that. I, I like your idea. Um, well, that's, that's just my personal opinion. We just did a, we just did a transfer uh, of this fiscal year, correcting some net and net, some you know, ups and downs in the current budget. Uh, we're obviously out of balance here by $24,000 even. I really don't think it really matters where you put it. Um, if we don't have the legal challenges, we're not going to spend it. And we'll be correcting it at the next meeting where it's before you. If you you know put it somewhere specific like o OPEB, um, we are on a funding schedule in OPEB, mm -hmm. and uh, that's not have to recalculate at all. But, uh, it doesn't matter. Stabilization, you know, for me. Yeah, but, no. we can put it in stabilization. It's the, it's the principle behind it. Yep. It would be. It would, I think as a as a member community of the county. It would make a statement as a county to budget an allocation or budget some sort of allocation that goes towards something that is quite something, quite simply something that's very near and dear to a lot of hearts of people in this room. And, and this room, and I, this this commissioner would request to go into stabilization. Okay, so the motion is to increase the commissioner's salaries to twenty thousand. So if you want it to be twenty thousand, vote yes. If you want it to be some other number, vote no. All right, Abington. No. Bridgewater. Yes. Brockton. No. Carver. No. Duxbury. Yes. Um, Bridgewater's not here. Halifax. No. Hanover. No. Hanson. No. Hanover. Okay, no. Yes. Um, Kingston. Yes. Lakeville. Yes. Marion. Oh, sorry. Marshfield. No. Manapoiset. No. Middleborough. No. Pembroke. Yes. Plymouth. Yes. Plimpton. No. 
Rochester. Yes. Rockland. I uh, know. Situate. Yes. Wareham. No. Whitman. No. Normal house. Uh, the motion carries 46.43 to 44.89. Okay. So, um, as a result of having salaries of 20,000 rather than 28,000, we now have three times 8,000 or $24,000 um, that could be um, allocated to another budget line. And I'm going to make a motion um, that we um, appropriately put 24,000 additional dollars into the line item for legal services. Um, there is a fair amount of litigation going on, and um, I just think that's a safe place to put it. Second. Second for discussion. I mean, sure. Yeah. Um, I think just a question. I know we've lost our longtime county attorney. Yes. Just what's the process that's going to go forward to replace that? Are we save. We're going to save money, or I mean, just kind of things going on. County attorney's present. Um, I don't think I have a chance to interview myself. I didn't realize you were in the globe. That's okay. No, I'm, I'm not going to talk to the that I look like I was a reporter right. yeah. in a small notebook. I mean, actually, I worked for Mark Day for three years, so our office is uh, still kind of carrying on with the commissioners right now. Um, there are a lot of legal um, problems that are coming up. I do think that um, that might be helpful. Um, but for right now, things are kind of staying in the status quo. Uh, just, I'm a female, and Mark's now a superior court judge. <laughs> Can you um? Can you come to the third? Absolutely. Now we have crowds rushing the hall. So. Okay. Alan, I think my the surplus in me. You know, you're sitting back here instantaneously. I think my first reaction would go to a whole debt board into a stabilization account, but. You suggested legal fees. Can we have an update on all the lawsuits that are currently going on? What the county has going on, specifically the ones in between the town of Plymouth and the county of Plymouth, and we're all in the South Street transfer station. Uh, Madam Chair? Uh, I, I think it's a, a matter that should be a matter of chair for you. If it's a pending matter, it's very, I would discuss that in public. Well, I, I, was, I was going to tell you, I'm not going to discuss that in, in the public yet. For the advice of counsel, but you know, it will work its way through the system, and you will be updated when we're allowed to update you. I'm going to agree with Plymouth, which is the first time tonight, on putting it towards OPEP. I think that would be a more prudent measure. I know that place would be put together. We put a fair amount of money aside in excess of it. 2.3 million right now, and it's something we're considering. But one thing that we, and I appreciate the generous donation to the recovery center, five thousand dollars. I know in the town of that voice, we have several recurring lines. We make donations to different organizations that we're part of. I would consider taking part of that and putting a line through regional services or somewhere within the budget if we can carve out another five or seven hundred, uh, sorry, seventy-five hundred dollars, possibly as recurring um, contribution to the uh, recovery center on an annual basis. I'm not, it's not in the form of motion, but I would just ask you to consider so that. To put it towards the opioid entity whose name I would say as a, as a county resource, I think I can speak on behalf of other towns that have had opioid issues within their communities. I think it would be relatively prudent to put aside a sum of money that would go to the recovery center as a contribution of the county, which is well within our right to do as a county in our budget. Um, I think it's the least we could do since we have an unforeseen surplus for this year and most notably coming for next year based on budget. So I just want to be sure I'm clear on what your idea is so that everybody is. Give them money, take it away from the twenty eight thousand you should put towards legal. So you would put I'm sorry. Yeah. So the deputy treasurer has just informed me. Thank you, sir. You've been really loud tonight, by the way. Um <laughs> under that's uh, 99 special accounts, line 15, human services, to add a line within that for the clinic recovery center. And so how much you would want to do the whole 24,000? I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say the whole 20, I think it's a 24. I wouldn't say the whole 24, I would look at 7,500, 5,000, so we're going to leave it up to the, uh, 
the advisory board to discuss further, and since it's your motion, Madam Chair, you could amend yeah. as such. I, I would like, and I, I'm sorry to put myself in this position, but I think I have a chance to think about it ahead of time. Um, 39000 dollars towards the OPEB liability specifically is kind of a drop in the bucket. As most of you have probably learned, the best way to address your own pocket liability is to bring it down by negotiating changes in what you're promising for your retirees as opposed to throwing, you know, thousands of dollars at multi-millions of dollars. So my perspective is we wouldn't get a lot of bang for our buck putting it there, which doesn't mean I, I object to it being somewhere other than legal, but I don't think we'd get much bang for our buck out of that. I, I like your idea. Um, more. That's that's just my personal opinion. The commissioners have a comment. We just did a we just did a transfer uh, of this fiscal year, correcting some in a, in a, some you know ups and downs of the current budget. Uh, we're obviously out of balance here by twenty four thousand dollars even. I really don't think it really matters where you put it. Um, if we don't have the legal challenges, we're not going to spend it. And we'll be correcting it at the next meeting where it's before you. If you you know put it somewhere specific like o OPEB, um, we are on a funding schedule with OPEB, you know, and we'll not start have to recalculate it all. But uh, it doesn't matter. Stabilization, you know, to me. Yeah, but go. we can put it in stabilization. It's the, it's the principle behind it. It, it would be. It would, I think as a as a member community of the county. It would make a statement as a county to budget an allocation or budget some sort of allocation that goes towards something that is quite something, quite simply something that's very near and dear to a lot of hearts of people in this room. Right. And this room, and I. This, this commissioner would request to go into stabilization, which requires a two thirds vote to go in and two thirds vote to go out. And I request that because we're trying to get to a 10% uh, of our total budget and stabilization. And we're just going to do it. Can I just ask for a point of clarification from council? Yeah. Is it a two thirds vote for us to put money in stabilization yeah. or just to get it out? It's two thirds in. It's two thirds out, too, right? Two thirds out. Yeah, two thirds out. Is it for both in and out? I'm just talking about it. Because under the muni mod <coughs> modernization bill for communities, it's, <coughs> it's not two thirds to go in, it's the majority in, two thirds out. Probably right. But you never know what they need from it. So the stabilization is two thirds in. Yes. We make a motion that we put the money in the stabilization funds to twenty thousand dollars. Second. Okay. There's a motion on the floor, so you can do a motion to amend and then continue from that. I make a motion that we amend the motion to place the money in the stabilization accounts. Second. So put twenty four thousand in the stabilization. That would give you more flexibility if you want to take it out. Then you can put it around. We need your permission to do so. Yes, but it's still a reasonable facility. Okay, so we have different proposals out here. One is minus to put it in legal. We have one to put 7,500 of the 24,000 into the opioid, additional money into the opioid recovery center. We now um, propose to put all 24,000 into stabilization. I realize that's not, it's not all motions and amendments, but just to sort of complete the discussion, who else would like to speak to the ideas of what to do? Oh, and we had OPEP as one of several ideas that, that um, Plymouth mentioned. Uh, I just want to echo uh, what the gentleman had said and support the 7500 towards uh, the recovery uh, center as a line item as a community. If anybody in this room has either suffered from addiction or family members or known people, uh, you will know that uh, there's not a more devastating thing to our community. And if we join together and make it a priority, I think it sends a uh, tremendous message. Uh, I would put the rest of it together. Okay. <laughs> yes. Just uh, want to make sure that expectations are set properly. Um, so recently, uh, Barnstable has gone through a um, audit process for process around just not the financials, but um, process overall. And one of the things that were called out by uh, the auditor bump. Uh, from the state was the process for giving to nonprofits as a procurement uh, me measure. So um, at below ten thousand dollars, we have best practices. Above ten thousand involves uh, actually procuring it. So um, we just have to be careful if, if everybody thinks that we can give that money to the Plymouth Recovery Center. We'd have to go through a proper procurement first. Would we? 
if we were to do 7,500, which would be fiscal 18 funds. This is a question for council. Or right, so I just want to make sure that we're doing less than $10,000 at our goal for the next fiscal year. Yeah, so the 5,000 we already did would not be counted in the 10 And then that also, just so we have reference, that would preclude any additional, I mean, if you're naming a specific uh, <coughs> organization to, to get those funds. So, um, you know, if another organization comes in and asks for more, that limits to commissioners as to how much they can um, uh, give out without having to go to procurement. So instead of perhaps naming, um, the, the recovery center, you could perhaps say for contributions for you know charitable organizations. All right, um, I'm going to withdraw my motion. I'll keep things a little simpler um, so that we can then go to your motion. And if you would, yeah, in the in the back there, if you, I'm sorry, I'm. I can withdraw up. mine so we can. Okay. Once well, it's clean. Yes. All right, so we now have no motions on the floor for the $24,000. And um, I guess I'm gonna ask you for one point of clarification. If we were to do 7,500 to the opioid recovery center, would that mean we could only do another 2,500 to another charity without? Without having to do a procurement measure. Okay, so it's 10,000 combined, not 10,000. It's per, it's per procurement, so if you're right. procuring to one, uh, we could give $9,999 so to a group without having to use best practices. Okay, could we do that to 10 groups? Yes, we could. Each for under 10000 yes. yes. Okay, so I just wanted that to be clear to everybody. So, um, Madam Chair, as a point of clarification, yes. the motion is for 7500 Right now there's no motion. Uh, they were both, the, the original motion and the amendment to the motion were both withdrawn so we could get something clean on the table oh. that reflects the conversation. Did you so, want to make a motion? No. I can, but somebody give you the look, exact numbers. Okay, so conceptually, do you want to do all stabilization or do you want to do 7500? No. What do you want to put the, the 7500 in the balance? Uh, 165. Uh, to stabilization. So I make a motion that we donate 7,500 to the opioid and transfer 16,005 to the stabilization fund. Yeah, is that math right? No, I can only do 2,400 to the next Thank you very much. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's withdraw that. All right, I'll withdraw that. Okay, so we're going to start with the 7,500, but I think that needs to be worded for a line item, or how yes. does that need to be worded? Council, can you say? Council, council. council. Sorry. <laughs> so we're going to do a motion on the 7,500, to move to the recovery. Yeah, I would do two separate motions. Yes. First, to put 7,500. And it be specifically to the opioid recovery center? If that's what the, okay. the body would. Um, okay. And then they can put it in the correct account. Or do we need to put it in a specific account? Mr. Scherzer. Well, they're debating that. I've just gone through a lot of weeks of audits, and the auditors recommend against this type of direct contribution. The council just said, right, if you're, you're intent on giving it to a charitable organization, I would just put it into the special account uh, and then leave that to the process. I wouldn't designate it to a particular entity at this point in time. Um, there is going to have to be a grant review process. I know the administrator is looking into that. I just think it, it sets a bad precedent and it causes more challenges than I think we're looking for. So I would do Just put it into special. Yes. Transfer $7,500 to line item 15, General Human Services. So your second. Second. Yes. Any further discussion? Hearing that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Madam Chair, don't we have to do the, the new meeting? Well, I, we got a unanimous vote. <laughs> oh, okay. So we don't need to. Okay. If, if it's not clear, then we'll go to that. So that leaves us with $60,500. I make a motion that we transfer $16,500 to the stabilization account. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Email. Okay. 
All right, now that we've set the amount in each budget line, we actually need to do one, one vote that's for the total budget for some crazy um, county thing. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I mean, do you still need to do Department 3 as a whole first? Because you, you've now set a particular line item, you've put the additional monies elsewhere, but you need to do that department and then the overall vote. So you just need a, a motion in front of the body to approve department three as amended. We didn't do that? You have not. We did the sidetrack by a number of amendments. We did the amendment. All right. So we need to take 24000 out of the commissioner's office line, which brings it to $308,642.80. Do I hear a motion to? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? OK, that motion carries. So we now have an amended budget. Is everyone clear what it is? <laughs> say yes. 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 OK. <laughs> Do you need a budget? Do you need a vote on the whole budget here? Yeah, I've got a motion. Um, um, do I hear a motion to provide for the maintenance of the county of Plymouth as part of boards and commissions, institutions, and sundry other services for certain improvements of the meet certain requirements of Massachusetts general law regulating the disbursement of county funds and the approval thereof for fiscal year July 1, 2017, June 30, 2018, as previously voted in multiple votes by this body? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we need to go back and do our, um, do our 64 D check, our 64 D vote. Um, no, we didn't have the right dollar amount. We had to redo it because it's somewhat in my ear. So um, I would entertain a motion to approve the amount of $1,260,000. And no cents representing the county 60% of the 10.625% of the excise tax revenue, which will be generated according to Chapter 64G as shown in the total income figure for the operation of the county of Plymouth fiscal year July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018. Oh. Discussion. What was the bottom here? 1,260,000. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? I would entertain a motion to approve the amount of $840,000 and no cents for presenting the registry of needs. 40% of the 10.65% of the exercise tax revenue, which will be generated according to Chapter 6014, shown in the total income figure of the operation of the county of Columbia for fiscal year July 1, 2017 through June 30, 2018. So moved. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Motion adjourned. Second. 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 Second.